Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today I'm working on my S2000 and I just wanted to, to uh, work on this thing a little bit and get it situated before summer hits because <clears throat> I think I actually just realized, I don't even think I've posted a street driving video with this car yet and I really gotta get on that. Uh, I've been driving the car here and there when the weather is nice. Uh, obviously it's been winter so it's been sitting for a while but um, in one of the last videos you guys saw with this car, we put it on the dyno, made about 500 horsepower uh, after installing the custom turbo kit that I put together. And it's been a blast. Um, it's been a ton of fun. But if I'd have known the heat issues associated with putting a turbo on an S2000, I probably would have reconsidered, to be completely honest. Um, this car has melted the wiring going into the fuse box, not it hasn't melted it to the point where it's bad, but like the the wiring loom and stuff uh, going into the fuse box was starting to melt. Um, the wiring for my oil pressure sensor down here was starting to melt. You can see uh, see the uh, caking here, so you can see the wiring to my oil pressure sensor down there for the oil pressure gauge was melting. Um, I wrapped the AC lines with this DEI stuff and that's been great. And what I did initially is I took this cool, cool it thermotech stuff right here and it's like a stick on adhesive um, heat shield and I put that on and it was good for a little while. But after driving it a couple times, uh, that stuff started to, the adhesive started to melt and it just overall, you know, hasn't been great. <laughs> so I gotta figure out some heat management stuff under the engine bay and I'm not cutting holes in the hood of this car because you guys know that we painted this thing and it looks really nice and I don't wanna cut holes in the hood in order to get the heat out of the engine bay. I wanna try to do it without that. So I've been looking up some stuff and ended up taking the turbo manifold off today. This is a turbo manifold from Straight Line Motorsports. Uh, they built me a custom kit with the custom VS Racing V-band inlet for the turbo, Hunter tuned 44 millimeter wastegate flange, and then a uh, VS Racing three inch downpipe flange. They welded all that stuff on and sent it out to me and everything fits great and yeah. But, there's just issues with a kit like this, and you can see that like the turbo manifold is literally like centimeters away from the VTEC solenoid, and it's pretty close down there to like my oil pressure sensor, and um, yeah, it's pretty close to the AC lines. There's some wiring that runs down here that it's pretty close to, and then obviously the fuse box down there, it's also very close to. So I took the turbo manifold off today and I actually went to the store and got some of that DEI heat wrap. And I spent about an hour wrapping each individual runner on the exhaust manifold to try to just alleviate some of the heat right there. And that might do it itself. I feel like just putting the heat wrap on the header might alleviate some of this because I've already put that shielding on the AC lines and I put some of that like tape, the cool it tape or whatever the hell it's called, I think DEI makes it. I put some of that tape on the wiring going to the fuse box. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a little bit more shielding on some more wiring and then I did the turbo manifold heat wrap and now I'm trying to make a shield Possibly, I just went to Menards and I got this 26 gauge steel, just a two foot by two foot chunk. And I wanna just like position it in there like I had that adhesive stuff. But man, I really suck at like artwork. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to finagle that thing in there and then there's like the heater actuator thing that gets in the way. Um, so I don't know, I might have somebody come over here that's more talented than me to put the shield in. I just don't really feel like doing it currently. Um, so I might just run it with the, uh, the heat wrap and stuff and see where that goes. Um, but yeah, this car has been a little bit of a nightmare trying to keep the under hood temps 
cool. Uh, coolant temp and everything is fine. It's just like the radiant exhaust heat and stuff that's just like melting everything. So I don't know if I should relocate the fuse box and the battery. I was thinking about doing the, I could do a battery relocate to the trunk and then I could take the fuse box and put it somewhere else. I feel like guys have done that. Um, I was reading on Google a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's the update with the S2000 guys. Um, hopefully it'll be up and running soon and I wanna know what you guys wanna see with it. This car has a 6262 turbo from huntertune.com on it with the custom V-band inlet. And I was thinking about downgrading the turbo on it because it does have a little bit of boost creep with this turbo. It does have a little bit of boost creep with the uh, 6262 here, but I have a 4849 here and I also have a 5855. So I was thinking we could do a couple little turbo comparison tests uh, between the 6262 and like a 5855 and a 4849. I think the 4849 would be really fun on the car, but uh, I also think it would be a slightly bit too small. I don't know though. I just don't want to make all the torque and break this motor. But I think the 4849 would be really cool and it'd be really fun because the car would be super snappy and super responsive. Um, the 6262 is really cool, but that turbo is like 700 horsepower capable. And I don't know if I want to put that through this drive line. So I feel like I want to downsize the turbo on it to make 500 horsepower and have the most response time possible. So, um, and I think it'd be cool to compare like same boost numbers on the 6262 compared to the 4849. So I might do that. It's a really easy to swap the turbo on this car. So uh, that's something I can do. But yeah, so that's the S2K. I really want to get it out soon and all right guys, so I've been uh, doing some heat management stuff on the S2000 and I finally just got it finished and I wanted to show you guys what I got done over the last few weeks I've been tinkering on this thing. I just got the turbo kit back installed and I wire tucked the passenger side components. So the fuse box, the battery, the electronic uh, steering module thing. And I just, like I said, I just finished all of it. I've been out here for, I've, been, I've just been working on it for like an hour a day for the last like two weeks. It actually took a lot longer to wire tuck this car than, you know, like a typical Honda. Um, but this is the final product, I guess, for now. I got the uh, power steering module mounted in the little cubby hole here. I took the fender off and I mounted it right here. And then I took the wires that go from the power steering rack and they go into the module i had to extend them and i ran them all the way down along with this is all the you know basic headlight harness the ac the fan um and some other weird things and i just pretty much ran it all tucked it extended pretty much everything uh, that's why it's been taking so long is because I extended literally everything uh, to get everything to plug in nicely. So you can see I got my AC stuff down in here all extended, looking nice. And I wrapped all the wiring with that Tessa tape. Um, that Tessa tape stuff's pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but I did run out at the end and had to use electrical tape on some of it, but... Um, yeah, so I'm gonna jack the car up and kind of show you. Well, I guess I don't really have to show you, but I ran the power steering lines. So this is the power steering electrical connections. I ran them and tied them onto the sway bar and then plugged them into the rack up there. Uh, the fan, the cooling fan wiring is right there. Tied that all up. So now, in the engine bay, there's nothing up here. So that's very helpful, other than the AC lines, which maybe I will uh, reroute the AC lines at some point, but I think with the AC lines being wrapped with this stuff from DEI uh, should be enough. Uh, plus, I took the turbo manifold off and I wrapped the runners. I did not wrap where they all come together. I haven't done that yet, and I might at some point. Um, but yeah. 
so the main reason I haven't driven this car a lot since I turboed it is because it's just been melting everything. But now, um, I'll, I'll show you this too. I, I put a grommet, so I took a hole saw and drilled into the firewall back here. Sorry if you can't see it. So I drilled through the firewall back here and I put a grommet. So I ran, so all the fuse box, all the fuse box wiring, and then I ran, I tied the battery wiring together to one uh, zero gauge wire. And I ran that into the car. And now the fuse box is actually mounted inside down here, which is actually pretty sweet. Uh, it bolts in exactly where the, I believe it's the heater box. I just had to go to the store and I bought some spacers. They're like, I don't even know how long they are. Maybe like two inch spacers to space the fuse box off of the heater box. And then I got threaded rod and I threaded the rod into the heater box holes. So I had a chunk sticking out and then I put nuts on the fuse box to hold it there and it's all awesome. Uh, and then I ran my battery wiring, just kind of how you would on a subwoofer setup or whatever. I tucked it under the carpet through here, ran it back. Oh, you can see it right there. Uh, and then that comes back into the trunk where I mounted the battery. And then I grounded the battery just to a threaded hole right here. I cleaned it off of the wire wheel. And I just took the factory tray and I bolted that to the floor. And then I ran the battery stuff like that. Uh, I could get a box for it and put a kill switch and stuff on this car, but I don't know if I'm going to. This will do for now. Uh, at least I'll be able to drive the car and not melt the fuse box in the process. Um, I don't know what else I want to do to it. I want to play around with some different turbos and stuff like that to figure out what I want to do for turbos. Because I think I want to go with a slightly smaller turbo on this car. The 6262 is great, but um, I don't know if I want it to be all, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> but I might get like a 5855 for it and put that on because I think that would be a really happy medium for like a 500 horsepower uh, setup. The 6262 will go a lot more than 500 and I just feel like I'm not utilizing it effectively. I think I could get a little bit faster spool out of the 58 and have a little bit more of a broader power band. Uh, not that the 6262 has a bad power band, but it's just maybe a little bit higher than I want. And with the 6262 that's on the car, it does boost creep ever so slightly on the top end. Um, and I think switching to like one step smaller turbo will alleviate the boost creep as well. And I want to get a three inch exhaust for it because I still have the NVIDIA cat back that's been on the car and it's honestly pretty small. I think these twin pipes that come off of here are like only two and a quarter inch and I think the pipe uh, here going up to my three inch down pipe is two and a half. So a uh, little sneak peek for you guys. I guess I wasn't going to show this car until I revealed the video, but it's looking great. You guys know what car that is. So yeah, I'm going to get it off the lift. I'm going to put the fender back on and uh, maybe start the car up, verify everything is doing well, and then should be good to go. All right, guys, I got uh, the S2000 finished up. I was just doing a light check, make sure when I put the fender back on that everything is working how it should be. And uh, we got all of the lights. Um, Trevor helped me align the fender back up and that's looking awesome. Uh, I had to have him like lift up on the bottom while I tighten the bolt inside the door. There's two inside the door, three on the bottom and then like four or five up top and by the bumper there. Um, I also went through and cleaned the car out. I had a bunch of junk in here, but I got down in here and vacuumed a little bit. Um, so everything is looking really freaking cool. Really cool.
Now I'm just doing a couple, I think this is the second heat cycle that I'm doing. I'm trying to break in the uh, header wrap. Uh, if you guys have ever wrapped a turbo manifold or whatever, they do smoke a little bit uh, until the wrap breaks in. But uh, yeah, this thing should be all dialed in, ready to go. Um, I do still have an ABS light, I gotta figure out. Uh, but I might do the ABS delete and stuff on this side and wire tuck this side as well, but that'll be at a later date. It's not needed currently, but uh, yeah. Leave a like on this video, guys. I got the S2000 all tucked up, and I talked about some of the issues that we had with heat in the engine bay. Uh, hopefully it's informative and helps somebody out there with the same issues. So leave a like, subscribe if you guys are new. Have a great night to better tomorrow, and God bless. We'll see you later.